Welcome in, everybody. It's Monday, and it's time for the prophetic forecast. Thank you for joining me from wherever you're watching this, whatever city, country um, you're watching this uh, in. I find that we have people throughout the United States, but really we have um, so many people that join in every week or when the Lord releases me to be on on some Mondays, I come on and you guys are watching from uh, literally all over the world. And I want to get into something today um, that the Lord's put on my heart for several weeks now. And I believe I have the release from God to uh, go further into this and to share in detail concerning a word that the Lord gave me some time ago. I want to unpack that uh, over the next several minutes. There is a prophetic word that the Lord gave me concerning a blackout. I call it the blackout prophecy because that's uh, the way the Lord showed it to me. Uh, but I gave a detailed word concerning uh, cyber attacks and warfare and those kinds of things. And I shared this a couple of years ago. And I have uh, some maybe some clips that I'll share with you today um, just to provide insight and clarity uh, to the things that the Lord gave me. And then uh, I also begin to share this again at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, me and my team, my church, we went into a time of fasting. Uh, really, for me, I started uh, at the end of the previous year, at the end of last year, and carried over into this year. And during that time of fasting, the Lord began to speak to me again in great detail concerning this, the urgency of what was happening. Um, many of you saw me get on, you saw me share those prophetic words, and uh, many people didn't even know that I had actually uh, been uh, uh, in a place where I had cut and stopped my travel. I wasn't going anywhere. I was actually kind of in a recovery mode during that period, and the Lord said, go on and share this anyway. And so I went on and began to share it, and uh, our ministry saw and received so many different uh, contacts and comments and emails and phone calls from people who many received it. And then there were many that uh, did not uh, necessarily think, well, is this is this God? Within weeks, we saw uh, really within a day or two, we saw that prophecy go viral. Over half a million views, probably about 600,000 on my social media platforms within a couple of days. Uh, then uh, within weeks, we saw the media grab onto it. Uh, as far as uh, from the government, the government began to release a uh, report uh, weeks after that prophecy, confirming everything that the Lord had said and how we need to prepare and how we need to be aware of what's going on. So what I want to do is I want to give you more clarity and insight on that. And I want to give you hope in the midst of it as well, because some people hear these kinds of prophetic words and they panic and they go into a fear. I want to take you to Bible and, and show you through the word of God how we are to handle these kinds of things. And then I want to end with giving you practical steps. So many people have written into me, what do we do? Show me, you know, is the, give us practical steps. You know, if you're giving a prophetic word, you have to give us the, the solution. You have to tell us, and, and you know, there are people that don't understand the way prophecy works. And I totally understand that. Uh, what I will share with you, I've been operating in prophetic ministry for uh, over 20 years now, uh, ministering around the country and around, um, really around the globe, uh, going from country to country, place to place when nobody knew my ministry or my name. I didn't care about any of those things. Uh, but through some of those experiences, the Lord trains you and he hones in your gift and you're always in training. Uh, so I'm always in training, but he hones in your gift. What I found through the Holy Spirit is that when he speaks to you a prophetic word, we don't tell him what he gets to tell us. You know, we, we're not in control of this relationship. It's a partnership. We're not in control of that relationship. Uh, where he does not speak, he has already spoken, meaning he's given us the written word of God. And the written word of God fills in every gap. It gives us the foundation and everything that we need. And so we have to stop trying to cage or put prophets into a cage to say, um, well, you can't speak a word like that. Well, if you share this, you got to share with me how I'm supposed to do all of this stuff. That's not how this works. Uh, if you're doing it the right way, that's not how this works. You hear the word from God, he either tells you to release it or not to release it, which is the thing that some people 
uh, who operate in prophetic ministry are not clear on. Do we release the prophetic word? Do we not? Uh, should we share it? How do we share it? Uh, the Bible tells us all prophecy must be judged. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself, so let me stop. I'm going to go into all of this in just a moment. I'm going to recap that prophetic word. I'm going to share with you in more clarity and detail on what the Lord said to me. Uh, sometimes you're hearing a sound bite. You're hearing a clip. You're seeing a post. And people don't know, well, well, you know, what is God really saying to this? I want to attempt to share that with you today. And then I'm going to give you the hope in it. And then I'm also going to share with you practical steps on what we do uh, from this point. So uh, those of you that are just logging on, if you're watching from Facebook, do me a favor and hit the share button and let others know that we're on now with the prophetic forecast. There is a word from the Lord. God, I believe, is always speaking to us. And if we would have ears to hear, as Jesus said, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. And so I believe that we are developing an ear to hear God more clearly. And so I want you, those of you that are led to share this, if you're watching this from YouTube, I want you to hit uh, hit like and subscribe uh, there. But we're going to open up in prayer in just a moment. But what I want to do is uh, take literally 30 seconds to give you a shout out. Let me know where you're watching from, what city, what state, what country, where you're joining in. I see you, Jenny, you're watching from Germany. I see you guys coming in uh, from all over. So let me know the city, the state. You're watching from Plymouth, Minnesota. You're watching from Tennessee. I see you watching uh, from Indiana. Houston is on. Brooklyn, New York is on. You guys are jumping in here. And uh, there, I'm going to attempt to unpack this in just a moment. Uh, again, I'm going to be speaking on the blackout prophecy. What did the Lord tell me? Uh, where are we in that? Is there hope in the midst of it? Is there clarity? Uh, what all did you really see? Uh, did, you know, did I get all of it or just a soundbite of it? I want to go into that as well. And, you know, we prophesy in part. And so we only have a part. And uh, God sends someone else with the other part. And so no one has every piece of the puzzle. But thank God for the Holy Spirit, because we're all we should all be connected into him. And he is the power source. I see you watching from Dallas. I see you jumping on from everywhere. Iowa is on here. Raleigh, North Carolina is on here. Trinidad is watching. Orlando. OK, everybody's on here. All right. Let's open in prayer and we're going to jump right in uh, to this prophetic forecast. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in. We ask you to come in the midst of this broadcast that you would move, you would minister into the lives of your people. Father, we're gathered from all over the world, every country represented on here, every city and state that's represented on here. And even though we're in different uh, geographical locations, we're connecting together with you, Father, with you, Abba, in the spirit. And so I pray, Father, that you would speak a word directly into our hearts, that you would bring clarity, that you would bring understanding. Father, you give us the anointing of of the sons of Issachar, that we might have understanding of the times and seasons to know uh, what we should do in this era, what we should do in this season and in this time that we're in. And so, Holy Spirit, as always, I'm asking you, think through me, speak through me in Jesus' name. Uh, amen and amen. Listen, if you're just coming on, hit share. If you're watching from Facebook, share it. If you're watching from YouTube or whatever platform uh, you're watching from, share it, tag someone in it, let them know it's time for the prophetic forecast. I gave a word and I want to share this with you. Let me read back to you what uh, I shared uh, some time ago. Let me read back to you what I shared. Uh, there have been several uh, points over the past several years where the Lord had me share concerning what I'm calling the blackout prophecy. Uh, there, I can take you back to 2020 or 2021. I'm actually going to show a clip from a couple of years ago uh, that goes a little bit into that. But I want to read to you what I posted uh, just uh, maybe a, a couple of months ago uh, on social media. And this, uh, again, it went viral. It went everywhere. Some people didn't agree with it. Some people did agree with it. Uh, I feel the release from the Holy Spirit as I prayed over the past several weeks to share in more detail on this. Uh, so I posted a coming blackout was uh, the title. Uh, I released this prophetic word over a year ago. Uh, really, it was longer than that. And again, at the beginning of 2024, and I wrote this because the Lord placed an urgency in my spirit about what's coming. God said to me that we've come into a period of outages, blackouts, shortages, massive cyber attacks that will affect or change the world. Companies will try to hide it by saying it's a glitch or it's an upgrade in the system, but it will be far worse. In the coming years and months, really, 
uh, we will see it affect the internet where I saw outages in uh, certain areas concerning their internet, power grids, communication, fueling, transportation, and even our financial or banking institutions. What we have uh, been seeing is a prophetic precursor. The next several years will be crucial in having a strategy and a plan to navigate without the technological conveniences that we've grown accustomed to. Hear the word of the Lord as wisdom and not fear. God is so amazing, loving, and merciful that he prepares us for what is ahead. So this was the gist of, of that uh, prophetic word that uh, I have been sharing for the past couple of years off and on as the Spirit of God led me. Uh, and I also want to share with you a clip that was shared back in February of 2022. Now, this only goes into just a quick portion uh, of this, but I want you to see this clip. I look a little different because I was 20 pounds heavier, but I want you to see this clip from uh, 2022. And let's uh, hear the words of the Lord uh, from that. It's a period where we're going to see cyber warfare increase. And America has not experienced that and some of our Western nations have not experienced that, but we need to begin to brace ourselves and buckle up because those things are coming. Through our intercession and prayer, we will be able to with wisdom navigate and we will be able uh, to lessen the blow of some of those things, but we are going to see cyber warfare increase. In 2020, I gave this prophetic word and people were alarmed and some people were saying, well, that can't be God. And uh, the Lord said to me, say it again where we're going to see cyber warfare. I saw in the spirit plans uh, where the enemy would desire uh, to attack our grids and our power system, uh, where the enemy would desire in America and in Western nations uh, to attack our banking uh, institutions. And so we need to begin to cover against these things in prayer. Why do we pray concerning this? We pray because the Bible tells us that we are to pray without ceasing. We're to always pray. And those that are called to the ministry of intercession, we must begin to forcefully advance in our prayers and intercession. But I saw this hybrid war where it will be fought uh, not just in the natural, uh, in a regular or traditional war sense, but it will be uh, advanced in a cyber uh, level. And so we're going to begin to cover. We need to begin to pray concerning our banking systems in America because I saw in the spirit a major hit to the banking systems in the United States. And so uh, those of you that are uh, prophetic watchmen, this is the time to lift the hedge in that area. So I saw those attacks against banking systems. I saw it against a certain uh, uh, companies, major companies within the U.S., as well as uh, our internet and power grids in uh, certain parts of our country. So we must cover uh, these areas because we're going to see cyber attacks uh, increase more and more over the coming years. And so it will be a day where that uh, is almost like normal. Uh, where that's almost like just a part of what we deal with and a part of what we know uh, within the world. And so get ready for that, but we can pray and we can cover. And then we can also ask the Lord for wisdom. According to James chapter one, he says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to anybody. He'll give you the wisdom if you ask him for it. And so our prayer is, Lord, give us wisdom to deal with turbulent times. And then we also want to make sure that in the middle of turbulence, that we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We cannot lose joy and hope. We actually rejoice and we get excited because we were called for these kinds of periods. I know for some people that doesn't make sense. You may be saying, how can you get excited and rejoice when all of these things are occurring? We can get excited and rejoice because we know who our hope is in get excited and rejoice because the Bible allows us to know that we were created to deal with adversity. We were called to deal with these times. And so we don't draw back. We stand up, we rejoice, and we keep pushing forward. But you're going to see uh, cyber attacks increase uh, within our world. And so we need to begin to cover and pray concerning these areas more and more. Uh, what I saw uh, in the vision of the Lord is also uh, more troops being sent to a part 
All right, I'm going to stop it right there. Uh, I went into another part of the prophetic word where I saw uh, conflict brewing uh, in the nations in the Middle East and uh, and in other areas where we would have to send troops out uh, into those areas. Those things happened. This was a couple of years ago before we saw uh, the things advance in Ukraine, before we saw things begin to happen uh, with the war in Israel. And literally uh, under right under our nose, people may not be aware, uh, America had uh, since that time sent out troops into other areas. So the, the words of the Lord have come to pass, which is not my point uh, really in sharing that. My point is to provide clarity. So I want to go back to this because many of you are asking questions. Can we pray about it? Can we, you know, I, well, is there wisdom in it? So let's deal with that prophetic word from February of 2022 that I just shared with you, that clip where I was 20 pounds heavier. Uh, I've been fasting and eating uh, healthier, uh, a lot healthier since then. And of course, with a travel schedule like I had, that's why I was that way. But I want to share with you several things that that I mentioned within that prophetic word. Number one uh, is that we were going to see cyber attacks that would come and be uh, a lot more frequent as though it would become the norm. It would be, uh, and I've shared this several times where the Lord said to me, it would almost be like a movie. Like we're seeing certain things that happen and it looks like we're watching a movie. But he said to me that it was going to become so frequent in, in the months and years ahead that it, it was just going to become normal. And uh, at that particular time, a uh, couple, couple to a few years ago, we weren't seeing it that frequently. We weren't experiencing it, not in mass in the way that we have. And so uh, when we came into 2024, uh, I was in the middle of a consecration, in the middle of fasting. The Lord gave me this urgency and he said, share it again, that we're getting ready to see certain areas hit with cyber warfare. Uh, they're going to try to cover it and, and tell you, well, it's not that. And literally within weeks after that word, I was contacted by people in various uh, places in the medical industry. I was contacted by nurses and doctors. My ministry was contacted by people in government. I was contacted by people literally all over. You guys have no idea uh, how, what a, a whirlwind happened in my life after that prophetic word just in January. Uh, and it really was a whirlwind. What we saw erupt uh, out of that uh, was we saw uh, phone lines hit. We saw cell phones hit. We saw uh, uh, certain people that could not log in or get on the internet in their state. We saw our pharmaceutical companies hit where people, even still now at this, at this moment that I'm giving this word, there are many people uh, that have not been able to get their medication still because there was such a massive hit to the medical industry uh, that it backed up the systems and people could not not get medications or uh, either they had to uh, pay out of pocket because their insurance uh, what company was under such a, a cyber attack that they couldn't get those things. So many things begin to erupt with literally within weeks after sharing that word uh, in January. There's no way I could know those things didn't happen uh, at that time. There's no way I could know other than by the spirit of the Lord. And when God shares the thing, uh, it is for several reasons. It's so that we can be prepared. It's also because you, you have to understand this. When uh, the Bible calls us the ecclesia, we use the word church. The word church is our translation of that word, uh, but it's the word ecclesia. And when Jesus describes the ecclesia in New Testament, he actually compares it to a governmental entity. Uh, this means that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ was never intended to be a simple institution. It was never intended to be relegated or, or put in a box as a religious, just a religious institution. When he refers to the church, he actually gives several examples. He says, wherever two or three of you are gathered in my name, there will I be in the midst. He was actually giving them the example of the Roman government at that time. And so it was a common thing within the Roman Greco government that they were under. You have to understand that Israel, although they were God's people, uh, they were still somewhat captive because you had the Roman Empire that had come in and taken over. So they were under this Roman Greco rulership. And within that governmental system, those that sat in, on the highest councils, no matter where they were, if there were two or three of them that would come together or call a meeting, they could exact or they could enforce 
uh, Roman law. They could enforce the law because two or three of them had come together. And so when Jesus refers to the church as the ecclesia, he's not saying that we're just a body of people that come together and only worship. That's a huge part of what we do. But when he refers to us as the church, the ecclesia, he's referring to us as the government of God. What he's saying is that we are a governmental agency. I want you to let that sink in. We are a governmental agency. We are the kingdom of God. If we speak and, and decree a thing according to his word, if we speak life, we will begin to see it manifest. If we speak the words of the Lord, the angels of God assist to bring that to pass because the Bible tells us in Psalms that the angels excel in strength by the words of the Lord. And so the church, you must understand the ecclesia is the most powerful entity on the face of this earth. I'm not saying that to be controversial. I'm telling you this because it's backed up in the word of God, which means that no matter how much darkness we see around us, it doesn't matter how much warfare comes our way. We are the church of the living God. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we stand up and begin to declare his word, even in the face of darkness, in the face of situations and pain and trials and tribulation, we will see light erupt in the middle of darkness. So let's understand that. That I want to preface what I'm getting ready to say with that. We are the church. We're the ecclesia. And so, you know, when, when the Lord begins to speak these words to us, he's sharing them with us because we are God's government in the earth. That's why he warns us of what is to come. That's why he speaks of a thing that has not yet manifested. That's why he tells us of impending danger. That's why he gives us a warning. I know everybody's in the expose your mindset right now, and they think that warnings are only to expose systems and people, but it's so much bigger than that. Our God cannot be confined even into that box. He shares his secrets with us. He shares what is coming with us because we are the government. We are the kingdom of God in the earth. This means that we have a right to know. This means that we have certain benefits. We have an advantage. We have an advantage to know what's coming. And if we would begin to pick up our Bibles and begin to read and study, everything is already outlined in the word of God. What's happening now and what's going to happen. Ecclesiastes 9 tells us this, what's happening now has happened before. And God causes the same thing to happen again so that history would repeat itself and that no man would know the end from the beginning. And so we're in this prophetic continuum where we're seeing a, a repetition of certain things. But I want to get back to this word because there are so many people that have questions on can we pray against it? Yes, we can pray against these things. Let's answer these questions. I want to go through this because uh, I've said this many, many times over the past couple of years. But I do realize that we have people that have not watched those uh, live videos or they've not watched those recordings. So uh, they don't know that I've spoken in detail on how we pray, not just that we can pray, but how we pray. So yes, we can pray against those uh, demonic plans and plots of the enemy. And yes, we have been praying. At the beginning of the year, the Lord told me to start a 24 hour uh, prayer uh, campaign. And I did that. For uh, over a month, we begin to pray and we're going to relaunch it uh, where we had so many of you, thousands of you signed up uh, to take an hour of prayer. So every single minute and an hour of the day, there was someone or ones, there were literally hundreds of people praying. Not only were they praying for me and you, uh, they were praying for, we were praying for our nations. We were praying for our government and the governments of those that were represented in that prayer watch. We were putting up a hedge and a covering over the nation. So I just want to speak to that because there are many people that say, well, you know, you release these words, and, but you didn't even pray about it. Yes, we have. And yes, we are. And yes, we do. What we see and what you see when I come on here on a Monday for uh, uh, 40 minutes or however long I'm on here is literally a snippet. Uh, of of what we're actually doing. It's not really the fullness of it, but there's so much prayer and intercession behind the scenes and with uh, with intercessors all over the country and all over the world that have been praying uh, for God's covering and praying for the will of God and the hedge of protection. Uh, so when I share these prophetic words, believe me, I'm sharing them uh, with a certain uh, level of a foundation beneath it, where it's not just coming on haphazardly or just sharing anything. I don't share for clicks and for views. I share uh, whether people want it or not if the Lord gives me that prophetic word. Now, 
There, there are other things that were mentioned in the clip that I just uh, allowed you to see a few minutes ago. Uh, not only did I mention that those things will begin to become the norm and we've seen it happen uh, over the past couple of years, I also mentioned that we can pray against these things. Now, some things, this is, this is where it gets a little uh, controversial for some people. There are some things we can pray against and it will change. There are some things that uh, are going to happen even when we pray. And so I don't, I am not in agreement uh, with uh, many of those prophets that always say uh, that this happened because the people didn't pray. I don't believe that. I don't agree with that uh, because there are so many hundreds of thousands of intercessors all over the world that are praying and that are contending in the realm of the spirit. And we cannot uh, succumb to the false thinking that we just weren't powerful enough. That's not true. And we cannot come to uh, succumb to the, the false narrative. Well, because the church has sinned so much that we are not powerful enough. Yes, there is sin within the church, but there's always a remnant of people that have not bowed. And when we look at God's relationship to man from Old Testament into new, he was willing to save a city over, just find me a few righteous in the city and I'll save the city. Just find me a few people that are willing to stand in the gap. So God never looks at a, a city or a nation and say, there are so many millions of people sinning in this nation, so I'm going to do destroy that nation. So we, we also have to get the clarity that what's happening now uh, is not God destroying nations and systems. So let's, let's deal with this. He's allowing certain things to happen, but God himself is not coming in bringing destruction. That's not what he's doing. Yes, he is judging. And yes, there is a time and a point that will come in the future where destruction is going to come. And he's going to allow uh, Abaddon, the Bible says, who is called the destroyer to be released in the earth. I do believe that we're seeing uh, that demonic force already rising right now. But I need to bring clarity to this, uh, that God is in the business of speaking life through us and in us. And many of the things that are happening in the earth, yes, it's because people have let it in, but it's not because there are not people that are praying and people that are serving the Lord. It's not because there are not people that are righteous. It's not because uh, the people are not seeking the Lord, uh, but many of these things are happening because you've got wickedness in high places, because there is a demonic agenda that is pushing very rapidly within the earth to try to bring about chaos, to try to bring about darkness. Now, let me read to you this in 2 uh, Thessalonians. I need you to I need you to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I've got to give you the word, and I'm going to go back into this prophecy and provide more clarity, hope, and give you some practical steps on what you can do. So let's deal with this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, now, brethren, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled. Here's the apostle saying, don't be shaken. Don't be troubled in your mind, either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. That day is not going to come until there is a falling away. We're experiencing a great falling away right now. When the Bible speaks about a falling away, it's been happening where it is the spirit of apostasy within the earth, uh, where there are many that are beginning to turn uh, away from God. There are many that are beginning to turn their hearts away from him, and they're going serving after their own idols and after other gods and after their own lusts and those things. And we have to be careful to safeguard ourselves from the spirit of apostasy, meaning we, we do this by staying grounded in the word of God. We do this by making sure that we're reading the word of God and studying the word. We're spending time in the presence of the Lord, and we're not allowing any thought that is contrary to the word to embed within our minds. It's called the stronghold. And the enemy moves by strongholds, whispers and thoughts that come into the minds of people to try to make us believe something other than the word of God. And so we're in the season of a great falling away. Unfortunately, it is going to get worse over the next several months. You're going to see many people uh, that are beginning to go and serve another God. You're going to see many people that will call him Jesus, but it's really the spirit of another Jesus. It's not really uh, Yeshua. It's not Yahweh. It's not the God 
outside of the Bible is some other thing or some other entity uh, that they're uh, chasing after. You're going to begin to see many people begin to bring in false doctrine. And so we have to begin to guard ourselves from seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's what the Bible calls it, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits, to, they come in to try to convince you of something other than Christ. They come in to try to convince you that there are more ways to God than just through Jesus. Seducing spirits try to come in and say, well, God really doesn't hate sin. You, you, he, he's okay with you sinning. That's a seducing spirit. It comes in to beguile just as that serpent did in the Garden of Eden, where he came in to, with whispers and with chatter to try to convince, well, God really didn't mean that. He Maybe he said it, but that's not really what he meant. He didn't mean that when you eat of the fruit, you're really going to die. Uh, he this. And so seducing spirits come in that way to, to convince you of something else. And so this is why we have to be weary of false prophets and a false prophetic that is beginning to rise. Because when false prophets come on the scene and they're here, and there's nothing you can do about that. Because Jesus said, uh, and when I say there's nothing you can do, you can't stop them from emerging on the scene. But you can stand in righteousness and speak against what they do and speak against their false words. But you can't stop false prophets from coming on the scene. Jesus tells us this. He said, in the last days, there will be many false prophets. There are going to be many of them that arise. You've got to make sure that you have enough discernment that you don't give in to that. And so a false prophet may release an accurate word, but they will always teach a lie. Hear me by the spirit. A false prophet or a false prophetic voice will always release an accurate word. They can tell you accurate things about yourself, but they will teach a lie. They will teach something other than Christ. They will come in with some kind of off doctrine. And so you have to pay attention more so to what is it that they're teaching beyond uh, what is it that they're prophesying. Yeah, I need to judge your prophecy, but I have to judge the fruit. I have to judge your character and I have to judge what is it that's coming out of your mouth. What are you teaching? What are you sharing with people? What are you, you exemplifying uh, through your message? And so we have to be very cautious of those things that are already here and they are coming. And so we're going to see uh, even more so a great falling away. It's already happened. That falling away does not necessarily look like everybody leaving the church. Sometimes there is a falling away of people and they're right in the pews. There's a falling away of people and they're standing in the pulpit preaching. There is a falling away and they're still prophesying, which is the only reason that someone could stand before God and say, depart from me. And he say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And they say, but we prophesied in your name. We cast out devils in your name. We, we preach this gospel, but he says, but I never knew you. He's speaking to a certain segment of the church. Let, let's, let's get this, this part together. He's speaking to a certain segment of the church because everybody doesn't believe in casting out devils. Everybody doesn't believe in prophesying. Everybody doesn't believe uh, there is a certain segment of the church where we believe in prophecy. We believe in casting out devils. We believe uh, in uh, the spirit of God still moving in the earth. There are some that don't believe that he's speaking to us. He's speaking to us that it's very possible that we could prophesy. He's speaking to us that it's possible that we could be preaching the gospel in his name, but have lost connection and relationship with him. My prayer is that that would not be me, that that would not be us. And so as Paul said, he said, I dare not preach to you and then be a castaway myself. I dare not bring to you the word and to have lost the conviction of the Holy Spirit within my own life. So all of us, we're in the season where everybody's trying to expose everybody. But many people are forgetting to cover your own self. Everybody's trying to point the finger at this one and that one. And oh, did you hear what happened to, to Pastor so-and-so down the road? But, but are you uh, in right standing with the Lord? Everybody's trying to call out what's happening in this system and in that organization and in this church. But what about your connection with the Father? Where are you in him? And there comes a time where we've got to begin to pull into God and begin to allow him to search us and to allow him to look within us and see if there's 
there's anything in me that's not like you, take it out. And sometimes we got to bring ourselves back to the altar. We got to bring ourselves. We got to put ourselves on a fast. There are times that we got to put ourselves in consecration and we've got to pull down the idol in our own heart instead of trying to call it everybody else's. That's a whole nother message right there. But let me move on because I got to get back to this. Let's go back to uh, Second Thessalonians. I got to finish reading this uh, portion for you. It says, look, let no man deceive you by any means for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Now, speaking about what we know as the Antichrist, but the Bible also says there are many Antichrists, uh, those that will come who are other than or opposite of Christ. And so it says this in verse four, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Oh, wow. This son of perdition will come uh, to uh, put himself above anything that is called God. And the Bible says here, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God to purport that he's something that he is not. Uh, we, that's a whole nother message that we can go into, but pay attention to that. And then verse five, it says, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things and now you know what is restraining? It says that he may be revealed in his own time for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Wow. Listen, let, let me try to explain this in the short time that I have left. Uh, when we read this in Second Thessalonians in around verse five, it talks about the restrainer. One who restrains, even though the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. And uh, the author of this scripture refers to it as the mystery of lawlessness, meaning that uh, there is so much chaos. When you see the word lawless, uh, it deals with chaos. When you see the word lawless, it deals with uh things that are uh, happening and there is no boundary. There is no kind of moral compass. There is nothing in place uh, to uh, bring about morality. It's a lawlessness that's happening. It's not just dealing with lawlessness in people. This scripture is referring to lawlessness within the systems of the world uh, where there would begin to be those that operate and they don't, they no longer have compassion. They don't have love in them. There is uh, uh, no kind of, uh, of morality, no moral compass that's there. And so we're in this place now where there is lawlessness within the world already and lawlessness within the systems. But here is the hope in this. In 2 Thessalonians 2, it says that the restrainer is here, that if the restrainer was not there, things would be much worse than they already are. And so there are many theologians that study this and they say, well, who is the restrainer? What is the restrainer that's holding this stuff back from happening in the way that the enemy wants it to happen? I'll tell you this throughout my study and my time of prayer and researching this and going to Bible school and learning so many things. They're teaching one thing, but the ultimate restrainer is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, not only is he the comforter, he is also the restrainer. He's literally holding back what the enemy desires to do within the earth. And so this is where I want to give clarity. I came to you with a, a prophecy of blackouts and things that are going to happen. And those words, I believe, are from the Lord and those things we've already seen. And yes, some of those things are going to get worse in the earth. You're going to continue to see it because of the time that we're in. You're going to continue to see it happen because of the new era that we've stepped over into. And uh, church in, in Western nations and in America, there are many of you that watch this from around the world. And I'll speak to you in your specific area as well. But can I just take 30 seconds and speak to the church in the Western hemisphere? I want to just say this to, to us. We have grown so accustomed to convenience. We have grown so accustomed to uh, comfort. We have grown so accustomed to uh, having things at our fingertips, everything that we want. We've grown so accustomed. Not only is it in, in the world, it's crept into the church. 
We choose, pick and choose our churches based on the comfort that we have. Well, we like their music or we don't like their music. Oh, I'm going to this church because I love that they serve me coffee. Well, I'm going to this church because they give us free food. Well, I'm going to this church because I just love how they just, you know, they always give out in the community. We choose our churches based on comfort. That's not everybody, but many people do. You choose your church if, if you went in and you didn't like the seats in your church. Uh, many members within their church would write a letter and start complaining or they go to the elders or to the pastor and they complain to the pastor. We feel that we need to get new seats because these aren't comfortable. Well, we feel that we should be doing this in our church. Why aren't we doing plays and why are we doing this? And there's so many people that have grown accustomed to comfort. A religious system makes you comfortable. A religious system void of relationship makes you comfortable. It causes you to become uh, so dependent on a crutch until comfort becomes your God. It causes you to become so dependent on a crutch until it is the idolatry of convenience. It is the idolatry of comfort. It is the idolatry of things. It's the idolatry of materialism. It's the idolatry of money. And we uh, in many of these nations do not understand what it is to suffer in the way that they suffered in the book of Acts. We don't understand what it means to suffer in the way that the early church suffered, in the way that they endured, but yet they did it with joy. And so when a prophet comes on that has been authorized by God and he gives the permission to release a word concerning uh, some of the things, the turbulence and the tribulation and suffering, then the people begin to cry out, God wouldn't let this happen to us. God's not going to let this happen to me. He wouldn't let this happen in our nation. And it is a form of idolatry to think that we are better than other Christians around the world. Let me just deal with this because I'm going to get in trouble right here. I didn't plan to say this, but I'm already here. It is a form of idolatry for us to think somehow we are better than Christians around the world. There are people there. I, I've, I've had the privilege to go uh, to many of these third world nations. I've had the privilege to preach in some of these areas where I'm in, in villages where they don't even have lights, where they don't have uh, air. They don't have many of the things that we have. And we, 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 we think, and this is why we've been guilty of, of embracing the prophets that tickle our emotions. They tell you that your political party is going to win. They tell you that you're going to have all these things. And they tell you that it's going to be peace all in the world systems. And they give you these things that took your emotions and then it doesn't happen. And the prophets that may be raw and may be telling you things that you don't want to hear, but they're giving it to you from the word of God. We stone those kind of prophets because we say, well, you're not giving me uh, the really what we're saying is you're not giving me the comfort with it. You, you're not giving me the, could you please just tell me something that makes me feel better? So you would rather a prophet make up a word and get on and give you part of what God said and then the other part that's made up. Part of what God said and then the other part that's made up. And so, yes, uh, and I, I just have to be real with you. Yes, uh, it is true that there is hope in the midst of this. And, I, and I'm going to get to that in just a moment. But we cannot be those that are so entitled and feel that uh, we are so much better than the people that I've gone to minister to in Africa that are in the middle of collapse in their economy, uh, in the middle of persecution where many of them are being beheaded. And uh, we can't go to them and say, well, God doesn't love you because you're going through this situation. We can't go to them and say, well, if you just had enough faith, then you could get out of the situation. We can't go to them and tell them, well, if you just prayed hard enough, well, if you just believed hard enough, then you 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 would get out of the situation. We can't go to them and say, well, you know, uh, uh, I, I know that God is love, but you just have to deal with your situation. And so when we say, well, how would a loving God give us a word of warning? Listen to that statement. Why would a loving God Give us a word of warning. Why would a loving God come on and tell us of blackouts that may come and of cyber attacks that uh, may come and of things that may happen within our government that we've never experienced before and things that may happen in our world that we've never seen before? He does it because he loves us. He does not want his body, his bride, his church to be caught off guard. He tells us these things not to ensue panic, not so that you can go and just say, oh, my God, I'm in fear. He literally tells us trouble is going to come. Don't let your mind be troubled. 
Don't let your heart be filled with fear, but things are going to happen in the world. He tells us in the Gospels, there are going to be wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be earthquakes all over the place. You're going to see all kinds of chaos begin to erupt, but don't be in fear. Don't let your heart be troubled. A loving God would tell you those things. A loving God would come to you and warn you of it because he cares so much for you. A God that did not love you would not warn you. A God that was not merciful and did not care about what would happen would not even tell you anything about it. He would leave you to your own devices and you would be in the middle of it saying, why didn't we know? Why didn't we hear this? And so those of us that are of that mindset and we're in the Western nations, uh, America and other Western nations, we've got to begin to shift our mindset. You have to stop trying to make prophets tell you what you want them to hear. That's not how this works. We share, if we give in the unction of the Lord, and if we do it right, we share the words of the Lord, and we share the words of the Lord as he gives them. And of course, hope is always a part of that. That's in scripture. I would assume that uh, the majority of people that would hear uh, these prophetic words, I would I would assume um, that this is going primarily out to the body of Christ. There are many people that come on from other uh, uh, faiths or religions or whatever that hear and they're nosy and they want to hear as well. Uh, but this is primarily to the body of Christ. We should know the word. I find also that it's interesting that people would rather uh, uh, a prophet or somebody else do the work than seeking God themselves. I find that it's interesting that we want to say, you tell me everything. So you gave me this word. Now I want you to go back and you go and you ask God to give you every single point concerning this on all the details of what we need to do. And what we have done, which is idolatry, is we have begun to substitute our relationship with Holy Spirit with a prophet or with a man or woman of God and a prophet, a man or woman of God, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher. We all have our places in the body and it's important that we function, but we are not to take the place of your relationship with God. We are not to take the place of your connection with the Holy Spirit. And it is a lazy church that says, just tell me everything. Just you go and you tell me all of the details of what I'm supposed to do. Well, have you prayed about it? Did you go and seek Holy Spirit about it? Did you go and commune with God about it? I know that this sounds very corrective and some of you think that it's harsh, uh, but I'm going to say it anyway. Have you gone to the Father about it? Have you asked the Lord concerning uh, uh, that word and what you should do concerning that word? And when you ask God concerning that word, what did he tell you to do? You cannot substitute your relationship with the father. You must seek the father. You must seek after him and you must hear him clearly. And maybe the instructions that he will give you might be slightly different from instructions that he would give someone else because your life and your situation might be different. I have to say these things before I go. Uh, any further into giving you practical steps and instructions, because even what I'm giving you now, you should take this into prayer. You should take this before the Lord. You should go into your word and you should begin to study the word of the Lord. And so there's coming a balance, a balancing to the prophetic. There's coming a reset to the prophetic. We're going to begin to see it happen where the Lord's about to reset the prophetic, where we're not going to have uh, prophets and prophetic people on uh, pedestals uh, where it becomes a form of idolatry, where we think we don't have to pray to God ourselves. Let me just listen to you and you tell me everything. That's not how this works. Yes, we hear the words of the Lord and then you take it and you go to God about it yourself. Now, uh, I want to go back to this and I want to finish this and I'll give you the rest of this uh, prophetic word. Second Thessalonians 2, I want you to read this uh, yourself. The restrainer is holding back what the enemy desires to happen in mass. But there are some things that are going to happen. There's some things that we're going to see. And one of them, again, uh, it will be uh, a, a continuation of what we've been seeing where, yes, we're going to see cyber attacks get worse within the earth. Yes, we're going to see blackouts continue to get worse. But the Lord said to uh, begin to prepare yourself spiritually and prepare yourself naturally uh, in the things that you could do. Some of you, you're going to think that is far fetched, but it is it's in the same way that you would prepare for a hurricane. If there was a hurricane coming to your city or to your area, uh, you would not think that it's an alarmist strategy to uh, get certain supplies and to prepare. If there was a hurricane coming to your area, I lived in Florida for uh, uh, several years in my childhood. And so we were in some of the worst hurricanes there, uh, even when I lived there and we learned to prepare. The church wasn't up in arms when uh, someone said, you need to prepare, go and get water, go and get these things. It wasn't a fear-based thing. We did it because we didn't want to be caught in a storm 
without preparation. The Bible speaks to us concerning preparation throughout scripture. Uh, we see this. We see it with the five foolish vir virgins and the five wise. The five wise virgins, they prepared themselves. They had enough oil so that they were ready. They waited all night and they were able to enter in. Those that didn't prepare, uh, they had to go and try to find things at the last minute. And so when I share this with you, I'm sharing it with you out of a place of wisdom not out of a place of panic, not out of a place of fear, uh, not so that you can be troubled. I'm going to say as the word of God says, do not let your heart be troubled. Do not succumb to fear. Don't succumb to panic in that way, but use wisdom to navigate. And that's what uh, that prophetic word that I shared, uh, uh, even the clip that I shared with you uh, from 2022 concerning this. Uh, one of the things that the Lord told me is he said, I'm going to give you wisdom to navigate this. So this is where faith comes in. Uh, even though we're going to see many disastrous things come in the world, God's going to give us wisdom to navigate those things as we begin to ask him for uh, that wisdom. So uh, there are several areas that if you are an intercessor, these are areas I want you to target in prayer. Those of us that are part of my ministry and many others, we've been praying concerning these things. The Lord told me that it was going to be uh, blackouts where there are going to be outages, where the enemy desires for our power grids to be targeted, where the enemy desires uh, for not only that massive cyber attacks against major companies, uh, where we'll see it again in uh, to it will affect our Internet systems. Uh, the enemy wants to affect our power grids, communication fueling, transportation, and even our banking institutions. Uh, you see that many of you that have this book on page 222, I wrote this prophecy down. This is a book of prophetic words and visions that the Lord gave me. And on page uh, 222, it's under the chapter called A Different Kind of War. I speak about these things here. It says, for many years now, I prayed as the Lord leads along with groups of intercessors in my ministry for the United States and for other nations. Several times the Lord has spoken to me uh, of a coming warfare that we're going to see, which will be detrimental to the nation. It's going to be detrimental uh, to not just our nation, but nations around the world. In a vision from God, I saw three key nations uh, and, and they banded with others to come against America. Now, this again is for prayer strategy so we could know how to pray. I believe these nations have already come into a secret pact and agreement, and I'm reading out of this book on page 222. I believe these nations have already come into a secret pact and agreement, and they desire to cause destruction. The result will be a different kind of war. They will use weaponry with advanced technology that has not yet been revealed to the masses. In this vision, I saw what looked like biochemical and cyber weapons and even the use of pathogens. These rebellious nations have opened themselves up to be used of an ancient demonic principality called Abaddon. This is the destroying spirit that is now operating in the world. Revelation 9 and 11 uh, speaks of this. It says they had a king over them. Uh, an angel of the abyss whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon. Now, uh, I, I don't want to go too deep into that because that's maybe that's a little deep for some of you. But if you read the rest of that chapter uh, in that book, many of you have it. Uh, it goes into more detail concerning it. But one of the things that I brought out uh, in this particular chapter is I saw a different kind of war. It was biochemical and it was also uh, going to come in the form of cyber warfare. Uh, where it would be at a point at a level that would look like a movie. And again, this is this book was written uh, several years ago now, a couple of years ago it came out and uh, we've seen these things begin to happen. It's already begin to happen. Uh, we're praying against whatever can be stopped. We're praying that it would be stopped. I'm not one uh, to, uh, I don't like when we see those kinds of words happen. Uh, when, whenever the Lord speaks to me about those kinds of things, I hope and pray that it is wrong uh, and I pray against it. But I do understand that some things we can stop, some things we cannot stop, some things we can pray and lessen it, but it's still going to occur in the earth. And I believe that the Lord is going to give us that kind of wisdom so that we'll know exactly what to do in the same way that you would prepare uh, for uh, if a hurricane was coming. That's the way that I want you to begin to prepare uh, for uh, these uh, next couple of years. And I'm just going to share this with you. And again, I don't say this to panic uh, you at all, but I'm going to read uh, just a short list. There are certain things that you uh, will need in the same way that you would do. You would be, if there was a storm, you would begin to store up uh, non-perishable foods. You would get certain things that you could have there. I'm just going to encourage that. 
I know that there are many people that, uh, again, they're saying that is panic. You fear mongering. Uh, but again, when those things uh, occur and you are prepared, the naysayers that are saying you're fear mongering and you got extra supplies, they'll be the same ones uh, calling you or trying to knock on your door to get those kinds of, of things because you will actually have them. And so we're going to have to prepare, the Lord said to me, for times that will come uh, where the enemy wants to bring a disruption to our current technologies. This means the things that we have become so accustomed to uh, that we depend on. So this means that if the phone lines are disrupted in any way, you're going to need something there where you can communicate that is not dependent on a phone company. It's not dependent on uh, technology in that same way. So I'm just sharing this with you uh, again, and I'm going to generalize some of these things because, again, I don't want to incite uh, any kind of panic. So you're going to need non-perishable food items. You're going to need water. You need uh, extra things like extra batteries, things like that, just out of precaution get those kinds of things uh, and and have them there. Uh, yes, some people are saying two-way radios, walkie to absolutely. Those are kinds of things that I've been encouraged to uh, and encouraging those that are part of our prayer team for coming years uh, to make sure that they have those kinds of things and to begin to break some of your dependency off of uh, technology alone. Because some of us, we live in a tech world. Everything is tech for you. And uh, I've been that way in the past. And so I've been uh, trying to uh, break some of that in my own life, because as you saw, what was a precursor uh, over the past several months, uh, people were all in a panic because they couldn't use their phones. Uh, and it depends on what company you were with. I have someone in my ministry that uh, works at a particular phone company, not AT&T, even though it hit AT&T. They work at a different phone company and that cyber attack hit their phone company as well. Uh, even though it was kind of covered up in the media and they were saying, well, it only hit this one. It only hit that one. It hit them as well. And uh, if you are on here and you have been one of those people that have been sensing in your spirit, something is, is stirring. You've been having dreams. You've been having visions. The Lord has been speaking to you. There are, there are almost 10,000 of you or over 10,000 of you that are watching this live while I'm speaking to you right now across multiple platforms that I'm streaming on simultaneously. And I want you to hear this because there are many of you on here that have been having dreams. You get this sense and this knowing I'm not talking about fear. I'm not talking about torment and terror. That's of the enemy. That's not of God. I'm talking about an urgency in your spirit where you sense it. You've had dreams. You've seen things. You've, you've been getting words of knowledge and it's warning words. It's something urgent. If you're getting that, I want you to understand you are not crazy. You are not crazy. Do not allow others to uh, try to convince you that uh, that you are not, that God is not communicating with you. It may just be that the Lord is communicating with you and he's trying to warn you of certain things so that you can pray, number one, and then so that you can prepare, number two, and you might be in this day, and here's the solution of it. You might be in the coming days like a Joseph. You might be one that the Lord has to uh, be a storehouse to your family, to be a storehouse to those that are around you. You might be uh, like one uh, in, in the New Testament, Agabus, who is a prophetic voice that begins to warn of famine and they were able to prepare in the book of Acts. He warned of it. They, they gathered resources and they sent the resources ahead so that when the famine came, that church was not affected by that famine. And that's the whole purpose of this. That's the reason why, why I'm on here. That's the reason why I'm sharing these kinds of words. It's so that you can have the advantage against the enemy. It's so that you can begin to seek God now and so that you can prepare. This is what the Lord said to me. He said this to me, solutionists are about to arise. It's not coming through one man. It's not coming through one woman. It's not coming through one prophet. It's solutionists are about to rise, and it's you. It's many of you that are watching this. You will become the solutionist for your family. You will become the solutionist for your community. You're going to become one uh, like a solutionist or a Joseph in your church, and you're going to say, God gave me a vision. I saw it. I saw how we can plan and prepare. I saw how we can thrive even when the economy is hit. I saw exactly what we need to do. I saw, and God gave me an idea. Many of you are going to be 
begin to say that. I got this idea. I heard it from the Lord. He showed me this. When, when things begin to collapse in the financial industry, we won't be affected by it. Why? Because somebody had enough faith and courage to rise up as a solutionist and to begin to prepare now. So I'm going to release this word and I want you to take it and seek the Lord about it and see what you can do. It may come through an idea. It may come through a dream. It may come through a word of knowledge. It may come to you through simply praying and sitting in the presence of the Lord in your quiet time and the Lord giving you peace and giving you wisdom about it. When he does, I want you to take that, write it down, and I want you to begin to use that. Start now. Start now. In, in the vision of God, I saw uh, uh, literally it was like a time clock uh, over uh, uh, a certain nation. And this time clock, it was going. Uh, and the Lord said to me, I'm giving uh, my people a period of reprieve, a period to prepare, a period to get things in place uh, in spiritually, naturally, uh, even mentally to get things in order for times of tribulation that will come in the earth. You're going to be ready when it comes. The strength of God is going to come in your spirit like never before. You're going to have an overwhelming peace in the middle of chaos where you're not going to be shaken by the things that occur. You're not going to be shaken by what you see around you. The peace of God is going to be there. The joy of the Lord is going to be your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength right now. And so we have no reason uh, to succumb to fear and panic and all of those things. We have been given an assignment from God and, and you are needed more now than ever. You're needed more now than ever. Uh, I've been uh, trying to release this and herald this message around the nation as the Lord has sent me over the past year. I did a tour where I was speaking about mantles, this book right behind me, Mantle for Greatness. I wrote it just several months ago. It came out and I was uh, going and sharing this, how the Lord says I'm activating mantles right now so that you're going to be preserved in the days ahead. You're going to be empowered. You're going to have uh, these spiritual weapons against the enemy. And I believe it's within the anointing. It's within mantles. It's within God releasing revelation. And he's going to use it to bring out the greatness that's on the inside of you. And so the time is now. The time is now for you to prepare. The time is now for you to do what God has called you to do. The time is now. Uh, if you are one that the Lord has said, you're going to become a storehouse, begin to pull it together. If you're one where the Lord says you're a storehouse, uh, you, uh, some of you, you, I met so many believers over the past year that said to me, the Lord told me to buy a farm. You heard my testimony. You've heard others. You literally bought a farm and, and started growing food because you are a storehouse for somebody else. And so in times of shortage, you're going to have. Uh, there are others that have started businesses where they're saying, uh, God told me to do this because I've got to help other people. And that's exactly what it's about. And I may sound like a broken record to many of you, and I don't care because uh, I, I went through this in 2015 where I gave the words of the Lord of what was coming in 2020. The Lord had me call out the year and everything. The Lord said to me, and I released it to my church, that there's coming uh, something that will come out of a lab. And it'll be some virus released out of it. And when the Lord gave it to me, it sounded like a broken record because I kept releasing it because he kept saying, tell them again, tell them again, because they need to understand the world has changed. Things have shifted. There are things that play in our nation that we need to be prepared for and we need to pray against. And I'm going to leave you with this uh, word. Speak life in the midst of it. And we speak life. We speak the protection of God. We speak good health. We speak that God's covering us from it. We're speaking that God's giving us supernatural immunity from whatever is released in the world. And, and we're going to couple that with making healthy decisions in what we do. But I'm telling you and encouraging you, speak life. Speak that God is lifting a hedge of protection over our nation, over your nation. You might be watching this from some remote village somewhere. You're watching this from, from some nation, uh, some country in Africa. And you're saying, but God, what about us? The Lord says, lift up a hedge through prayer over your own nation over your own government and begin to call in the spirit for those that are solutionists and prophets to begin to rise up within your nation, to begin to release the words of the Lord, to release what God has said so that you can build for the future. And so uh, I'm, I'm ending this uh, on that note. Now, listen, there are other things that you are going to, you might possibly need uh, for uh, some the, the years ahead. And again, I'm going to try to keep some of this uh, in a general way. The Lord showed me disruptions to uh, our fueling. 
where I saw uh, shortages that would come uh, in gas and in fuel. And so for those of you that uh, you depend on that, you are going to want to heed the words of the Lord, pray, ask him for wisdom. And there you may want to keep uh, at least a, a full or half a tank of gas at all times in your car. Certain things like that, that I know it seems simple. It seems out there for some people, but I'm sharing this with you uh, anyway, because these are things that you may want to do. Uh, also, you might want to have uh, other uh, supplies, toiletries and things like that uh, in the case that you need them. And, and I'm praying again that many of the things would be lessened and many of those things would be stopped. Uh, but in the case that you experience certain blackouts and shortages and things that may come over the next couple of years, you're going to be ready spiritually and you're going to be ready naturally for what is to come. And you, you know, many of you know my ministry and you know that uh, you followed this ministry for the past several years. You've seen me. Uh, when I come and share a word from the Lord, I'm sharing this with you to uh, help build you up and to prepare you. As uh, harsh as it may sound, as much of a warning as it might be, uh, I want you to have clarity and I want you to have the right takeaway from it. Do not go from this and panic and go, oh my God, we got to get, don't do that. Go from this and pray cover and, and begin to speak life and ask the Lord for wisdom. I guarantee you he'll begin to show you things. He'll bring it right to your spirit. He'll show you in your heart. You'll know exactly what to do for your family. You'll know exactly how to cover and prepare for them. And, and when, it, when things begin to occur, you won't be caught off guard by those things. Many of you, when you saw the things happen over the past a couple of months, you begin to write into my ministry and say, thank God for the prophetic warning because we you, you released these words and we know that this is happening happening now. Uh, many of you that saw things begin to happen, uh, you begin to say we already prayed and we covered that because the Lord showed it to us. And that's what I'm trying to really instill. And I hope you get that word. Now, listen, there are many of you that are have asked, you've written in and you've asked, uh, what about Mantle Conference? What about Mantle? Isn't it happening in April? No, it's not happening in April. It's happening in July. So for those of you that were a part of our Mantle gathering last year and you uh, joined, you came in person, thousands of you that were there. It's a conference I do every year uh, because we had so many people uh, that uh, registered in advance. We had to move the dates uh, because we had to be able to accommodate all of the people. So we had to shift it over to an arena. And we moved the dates to July 10th through the 13th. And so if you registered last year or whenever, your registration was, was switched over to the new dates, is going to be held in Atlanta, Georgia at the State Farm Arena. And that area needs this revival that's getting ready to come to uh, Atlanta. So if you still want to register, there is still time for you to register. There's still time for you to uh, jump on and register and be a part of that event uh, for July 10th through the 13th in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, I do realize the name on here is uh, that I titled this. This uh, title of Blackout Prophecy was given uh, a couple of years ago where the Lord began to tell me there were blackout cyber attacks and things that were coming. Uh, this specific title is not, I'm just realizing this because there is a solar eclipse that's coming uh, in uh, the next several days. And so some people probably assume that this is about a solar eclipse. It is not. I've been using this language for uh, the past couple of years off and on. I do believe that there are signs that we're seeing in our world and something significant is attached to that solar eclipse. I didn't plan to talk about that today. Maybe I'll come back on and share more about uh, the, the solar eclipse uh, maybe on uh, maybe in the next several days. Uh, but again, this is concerning the blackouts that I've seen and I've used this language for years. It just so happens the solar eclipse is coming. Uh, but I'll, I may share some significance of that uh, in the coming days. If you don't want to miss out on when I share uh, details of any of these prophetic words. If you don't want to miss out, some of you waiting for me to share about uh, our mantle conference, the speakers and those that are coming, we're almost filled up and we've not announced one speaker because people are hungry for God, but I'm going to announce that this week. And if you want to get that announcement right to your phone, I want you to text uh, this uh, text thread. So We've got a number that you can join our text thread. I send out prophetic words through that. And it doesn't matter what country you're in. You can text the word kingdom. That's the word kingdom, K-I-N-G-D-O-M. And again, that's because we're part of the kingdom of God. And so you can text the word kingdom to the number 833 201 
833-201-5884. Again, that's 833-201-5884. And when you text uh, the word kingdom to that number, uh, you're going to you're going to immediately be put into uh, our text thread, and you'll be able to get uh, all of the details concerning the conference is coming, and it's actually on your screen now. If you want to join in, go to your text messages, put in that number, and then send the word kingdom to that number. It's going to put you right into uh, our uh, text thread community, and you'll be able to receive that announcement when it comes out this week, you're going to get it first. So listen, thank you everybody for joining in and for being a part of this uh, live this Monday prophetic forecast. If you're blessed by it, if it helped you in any way, hit share on Facebook, tag someone in it, uh, hit subscribe if you're watching from YouTube. I'm also going to share our uh, our advertisement or commercial for uh, the Mantle Conference there on YouTube. So hit subscribe to get it. I pray the blessings of the Lord over you. I pray that God gives you wisdom. I pray that the Lord gives you peace and grace to guide you in the days ahead. I bind the spirit of fear and torment right now in the name of Jesus. We take authority over that. We shut down every demonic attack against the people of God. And Father, we even stand and pray for our nations. We pray for uh, the government, Father, that you placed us within. We stand as the government of God, as your governmental agency, and we speak life over the nation. We speak life over every believer, over every person connected. Father, we thank Thank you that you put up a shield of covering over us. Father, I pray that Joseph's would begin to rise and that you would release an Issachar anointing. Begin to show your people which way we are to go. Give us, Father, wisdom, I pray, to show us what to do. And even when there is chaos, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you prepared us for it. You're covering us in it, and we will thrive no matter what we see in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you received that word. Listen. I'm going to end it here. I'll see you back here next Monday, same time, same place. If the Lord says the same, and that actually might be the day. Let me check the, the calendar here. I actually think that's going to be the day of the solar eclipse. Uh, so uh, I'll definitely be on if the Lord says the same to share more with you about what's going on uh, with that. What, what is the Lord showing me is the significance of that. Uh, and there is more on it, but I'll catch you back here next week. Same time, same place. God bless you.